Today we're talking about how to get more images in your wedding photography portfolio. Keep waving. This is good stuff, man. Hello and welcome to the office today. We're at the studio. What's going on in this corner? Let's move that out of the frame here. There we go. Now super professional. No random things coming in from the, the right-hand side. Although, it did kind of look like a shadow. Maybe it was a nice frame. I don't know. Today, we're talking about how to get more images in your wedding photography portfolio. And this was a question that I saw actually come up a number of times. And I thought that it was important enough to address it in a video. And hopefully, you'll find this helpful, especially if you are in the early stages of building your wedding photography business. I would also say, as somebody that's had a wedding photography business for 15 years now, that I am still always in this process, and you see me do it here on YouTube for wedding photography, and then maybe outside of the scope of just weddings, that I'm always building my own portfolio when it comes to um, travel projects that we want to do that maybe aren't being sponsored yet, but we want to create kind of that sample content for other companies to book or maybe collaborate or do some sort of sponsor deal. And that's kind of exactly what I did as far as wedding photography went in the beginning, that I, I needed to create those images in order to sell those images. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, if you're not yet on the Focal waitlist, head on over there. What Focal is, uh, it's my brand new website, both the front end and also the back end. So the way that I send contracts and uh, book people in and, and send payment requests. And in the month of January, if you get on the waitlist, you save $935. There's a setup fee associated with it because they build your entire website for you. Um, that you do a call, you don't have to do any of the web design yourself, that they just do it all for you. They'll they'll ask you questions, they'll, they'll write some things. They have professional copywriters that will actually write your copy for you, which means that the text on your website, it'll sound like you and you'll be like, wow, I'm such a good writer, but somebody else wrote it for you. And you can obviously go and you can change anything that you want within your website, but they just give you, it's, they called it a first draft when they sent it to me and it was pretty much entirely done. I spent about 20 minutes going around fixing a few things and I was 100% happy with it at that point. So uh, head on over to the link in the description below if it is still the month of January. Today's video though, how to actually get images for your wedding photography portfolio. There are, I'm going to call it three and a half ways, three ways for sure. Halfway also, it kind of leapfrogs off of point number two. But point number one is to set up engagement style shoots. I did this in the very beginning. I was offering up as many free engagement shoots as I could. And that might seem crazy and strange. Why are you giving away your services? You're going to like, no one's going to actually spend money on your wedding packages if you're giving away engagement shoots for free. And it turns out that people really did kind of, because I was new, I didn't really have the trust. They kind of wanted to try before they could buy. And I made that very easy for them. If they were a couple that really kind of fit what vibe I was going for on my website, I would be very happy to offer them up a free engagement shoot. One for them, it's awesome because they get to actually try a new photographer and they, I would think I was releasing 10 or 15 images that they could have access to. Um, if they wanted all of them there, I think there was an extra fee, but selfishly for me, I just wanted them for my portfolio. So the deal was that we went out, we shot, I could use these images on my website. They would get some and no money would exchange hands at that point. If they enjoyed the experience, they liked the photos, they are welcome to book their wedding day with me. And most of those couples did end up booking that they did enjoy the experience. Looking back, some of those shoots are pretty rough. Um, I wasn't nearly as skilled at getting people comfortable enough to a point that they're just normal in front of a camera. Uh, but for whatever reason, I did end up actually converting a lot of sales from that. So that is something that I did. I also would reach out to all of my friends. I would bribe them with pizza and beer and try to get the people that I wanted in my portfolio to be in my portfolio. And one other kind of and one here, if my couple ever asked like, what should we wear for the the shoot? I would usually say a white dress uh, of some sort. It doesn't have to be like a wedding dress, obviously, but just kind of uh, like a white summer dress, something like that. And that was usually my suggestion so that it would just blend so much easier into a portfolio in wedding images that yes, they're obviously not wedding images, but they feel a lot more wedding whenever somebody's kind of wearing that white summer dress rather than just wearing kind of jeans and a black t-shirt. Again, season to taste if that's what you like. Awesome. If not, that's cool too. Um, but kind of take bits and pieces from this video that, that you think could apply to your business. Number two is setting up styled shoots, whether they're actual styled shoots, like the one you're seeing on the screen here. Or this could kind of also mean that if you just get some friends to show up in their the, the things that they wore on their wedding day again, 
I did this a lot and my, I guess the two shoots that stuck around in my portfolio for the longest, uh, specifically the one was one of these shoots that I was just like, Hey, can we just go up and do some photos kind of in the spaces that I would want? And also at the time of day that I would want. But all of a sudden I had an incredible session in, in my portfolio and a shoot that felt honestly like a little bit more true to them, that they were more relaxed than just themselves, that we were going out to, to have some fun and, and take some pictures rather than a wedding day where there is kind of a lot of that residual stress on you. It, it is a wonderful experience of day, but there is kind of that stress. Uh, when you're just out doing kind of a style shoot, it's a lot easier for you to just go and do whatever you want, wherever you want, and change if the location doesn't end up working or if you need to go buy umbrellas or whatever, it's no big deal. Or even rescheduling to another day to make sure that you get that nice sunset. These are all possibilities um, that aren't really possible. I guess you can buy umbrellas on a wedding day, but you can't really reschedule the wedding to do a sunset photo session. Uh, so style shoots are incredible. The kind of point five to this is that if you are interested in collaborating with other vendors, every now and then this happened to me uh, three times actually in my early career that I was brought into a shoot. So somebody else was doing a style shoot and they did not have a photographer and they asked if I could shoot it. So I did this for a makeup artist. I did this for a dress shop and I did this for a venue uh, that they just literally didn't have a photographer somehow. Um, I think that that's like, the, I feel like it's always m like myself initiating these or my friends or video creators or whatever it might be. Um, but every now and then there is actually actually a shoot that's going on that doesn't yet have a photographer and you can literally just show up to it and be like, wow, thank you so much for bringing all the floral and doing all the stationery and doing all of this extra work and just having me show up and be able to shoot this for my portfolio. So that is a legitimate thing that happens. Uh, the way that that happens though is through friendships and actually networking, usually in real life, uh, not just being kind of internet friends, although internet friends, it, it could work. Uh, I would say the people that you actually know, even if they're a small piece in that. So if you happen to know the makeup artist that, that is signed in to do this shoot for a venue and she finds out that they don't have a photographer for the shoot yet, they are going to be the most likely to to invite the people that, that they know and that they like best. So if you're high up on that list, uh, all of a sudden you might get some invites to some things that seem very, very too good to be true. And then number three, is to go to workshops. So a lot of people will put on portfolio building workshops or things that will actually give you some skills. The I guess the caveat with this is that you're likely going to be working with professional models or people that have some sort of in front of the camera experience. So I wouldn't say that like if you built your entire portfolio on workshop images, you're going to have an amazing portfolio. It's going to be ridiculous. People are going to be like, where did this guy come from? How did you shoot in the mountains of Italy? And then also in Hawaii, um, traveling to all these workshops. You can realistically make a world-class portfolio from it. The downside of that is from a client experience standpoint, if you're not comfortable working with people that are just uncomfortable in front of the camera, you are going to struggle very hard to create any images that people can see in your portfolio with actual people. Um, so don't just build all in one spot. If you are going to do this, maybe do a few of those workshops or do some locally that involve some local landmarks and then make sure you do get out and you do those engagement sessions and wedding days with real couples. Um, don't just rely all on workshops. But if you are interested, um, specifically way up north does a lot of really, really cool stuff. Head over to their website. They have a bunch listed now. Um, also not a sales pitch for way up north, but they just tend to have the most on going cool stuff happening. They'll do like Faroe Islands and Iceland, um, mountains in Italy and uh, just like all kinds of cool stuff. So if you are interested in kind of getting those images, that's one easy way to achieve them. You're literally paying money in exchange for your portfolio. Might seem a bit weird, but looking back, I would have been happy. I should have paid people more money to be in my portfolio in the beginning um, because pizza and beer wasn't always convincing enough. It was sometimes, but I think real money would have been a lot more convincing and it could have got me on my way to actually booking the weddings that I wanted to be booking a lot faster rather than sitting back and kind of waiting for that to slowly come to me organically. That is all for today. Don't forget to get on the wait list for your Focal website. And uh, in the month of January, save that $935 USD, get your custom built website, beautiful back end where you can do all your, your sales things and keep everything organized. Um, that's one dream of mine for a long time is to actually have an organized uh, back end of my business, not just an Excel spreadsheet and calendar and asking for money over PayPal. Um, now everything's in one spot. It's very, very nice. So uh, head on over there. If you are watching this in a month that is not January 2020, uh, unfortunately, this offer is closed, but um, if you are watching it in January 2020, you can go do it. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow. Don't forget to turn the bell on if you want to see more wedding photography content every single day of this month, January. And there's also a link in the description for the playlist of the videos that have been up this month so far. See you tomorrow.